of the WWF 2015-2016 Earth Hour City Challenge here at ECLAY's Bond Center for Local Climate Action and Reporting, otherwise known as CARBON. And with me today, I have fellow presenters Jeet Mystery, Project Manager for the WWF Earth Hour City Challenge, core team there, as well as Eric Raybinder, the Insight Lead for Accenture Strategy. In terms of the agenda today, uh, we will cover some practical instructions for webinar participation. Uh, thanks, Katya. <laughs> um, as well as the Earth Hour City Challenge background purpose and evaluation procedure, as well as how to report for the Earth Hour City Challenge on the Carbon Climate Registry, including a deeper live overview of um, what it's like to report online and offline, further technical guidance, and then have a brief questions and answers session. So without further ado, Jeet, would you like to continue? Yes, um, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Lucy. I thought I would um, give a brief background to the Earth Hour City Challenge, and then we would then proceed with um, Eric, who is uh, responsible for the evaluation to, to take you some through in some more detail about the evaluation process. <clears throat> so just get to, to give you a quick background about uh, the city challenge, we actually, um, uh, WWF uh, Sweden developed the concept of the city challenge in around 2010, where the idea was that we wanted to create uh, a platform to where we could challenge cities to report um, the actions and commitments towards a uh, climate-friendly one-planet future. So how could cities contribute in, in uh, through all the sort of conditions that they can create to helping people live within planetary boundaries? We first ran a, a pilot in Sweden, um, a very small pilot with about 10 cities, um, and that was quite successful. We had quite a, a lot of um, demand for that, and uh, at that time it was the city of Malmo which received the first Earth, Earth Hour City Challenge Capital Award, and mainly for its strong commitments and actions to make the whole um, geographical area under its jurisdiction run on 100% renewable energy by 2030. Um, having done that, um, we then thought maybe it was a good idea to develop the initiative at a global scale instead, um, and we teamed up with um, ICLEI, um, because of their excellent global reach through cities and also because uh, they pioneered uh, cities reporting through their uh, carbon climate registry, which would be the, and still is, the official reporting platform for uh, the city challenge. Um, we also um, recruited a high level international jury of experts for the initiative and uh, as you see here that we, that it's been expanding and includes uh, experts in the field of urban development and climate change issues from ICLEI, ADB, C40, and many others. Um, so um, we act, conducted our first pilot, international pilot, between 2012 and 2013. Um, the, the actual uh, cycle for the challenge runs runs from March to around, uh, sorry, from around uh, May to March time um, back then. Um, and we had uh, six countries participating um, who were, and their cities were eligible to participate and we had 66 cities participating in that first round. Um, most recently, if we come round to the previous uh, round, we've now expanded the challenge up to 17 countries now and we've had 166 registered cities. So there's been some quite uh, significant development with the city challenge which we're very, very happy about and, and, and proud about. Um, in terms of like uh, which cities have done, have been successful, um, uh, for 2013-2014, uh, the city of uh, Cape Town was awarded the title of Global Earth Hour Capital. And that's because it was recognized for its ambition and some pioneering actions that it was taking to combat climate change and to bolster the quality of life for its citizens. Um, and most recently, last year, um, Seoul in South Korea was awarded the, the city challenge capital um, because it was uh, very ambitious in, in terms of its 
um, goes to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 10 million tons and to achieve 20% electricity self-reliance by 2020, which was uh, very much uh, uh, thought highly of by our international jury. If you move to the next slide, Lucy, please. So what is the purpose uh, for this year in particular? Um, uh, what we want to do is really mobilize action and support from cities in this global transition which we, we require to low carbon climate resilient future. Uh, we've run themes for previous and uh, for the past couple of years it's been focusing on uh, how cities can create conditions for enhancing renewable energy. Um, but for this year the city challenge theme is bridging the gap. Now that refers to if, if you know where the gap between aggregated global climate commitments and the additional commitments and actions which are required to, to keep global warming below this vital two degrees Celsius mark. Um, so what we want cities to do is to report very ambitious but holistic and inspiring and credible plans um, they have to, to work on climate change issues which focus on really powerful, inspiring and creative actions and solutions which they have to reduce their emissions. And they must also back these up with very credible and inspiring commitments and actions to really you know, speed up this transition towards a renewable energy based and climate resilient economy. And of course, uh, last but certainly not least, we, we believe that cities should focus on accountability and transparency and citizens' participation in this transition. Um, so we really look for cities to report the co-benefits of what they're doing and relate to in particular food, water and energy security which are very important. Um, and uh, also which one uh, further point which is quite important to take into consideration is that when we select our Earth Hour Capitals we will always take into consideration the resources committed uh, by those cities in relation to the size of the challenges with which they face and face and also the capabilities of that city. We realize that uh, you know in various parts of the world uh, cities don't have so much capabilities as they do in others so they may, they may not have jurisdiction to act and also of course they may not have the same level of financing so when we do our evaluation we, we are very careful to take uh, these two points into consideration. We can move to the next slide, Lucy. So, why should cities participate? Well, um, we think uh, if you participate participate in city change, it provides you a very good way to develop your reporting of climate-related data uh, in a transparent and accountable way. And you'll be using an internationally recognised platform, which is uh, ICLEI's CCR. Um, so, this can, if you report year on year, you can also have a better idea of where you're going and then you can update the type of actions you are doing. So it really provides a one-stop uh, shop, if you like, for, for you to um, develop your climate strategies. Um, being part of a challenge will also help you to increase awareness and support amongst your stakeholders, including public, uh, policymakers, investors and, and companies for the work which you're doing on uh, climate related issues. Um, you will also get uh, much more interest from the media at all levels, at local, national and global levels. And the way the City Challenge works is, is that we work for our local WWF offices as well as at the global level from, from the core team here. So you will get in some ways a double whammy exposure through our media channels as well as through other sort of uh, partners to the challenge such as um, ICLE and, and uh, the organizations represented on, on the jury as well. Um, we, uh, cities will also receive uh, high quality feedback on, their, on the development of the city sustainability actions. Um, we did that for all national capitals of, for the first two years and we've now expanded that to all finalists and such. So. Uh, the feedback you're getting is, is of a much higher quality than it has been previously and we've been careful to listen to cities' feedback on the challenge to, to improve that. Um, you'll have the chance also to share your expertise and learn from other cities and partners through 
um, various conferences that our local offices will have, and also we have a global uh, award ceremony which takes place at once the round is over, and there we'll provide a platform for, for cities to really exchange and learn from each other. Um, and of course, on, on the policy, policy front, by being part of uh, the CCR and being part of the City Challenge, we will be helping to place collaborative pressure, um, not just as cities, but as, as other sort of non-state stakeholders or national governments and financial institutions to really support local climate action by, by so showing what you can do and by showing that you can do so much more if there is uh, this uh, support from other levels. Um, Finalists also get additional space through WWF communication channels. In particular, we have a social media campaign uh, which, uh, which finalists uh, qualify for. Um, and that's been very su successful in reaching out to uh, the general public in particular. Um, so overall, we really feel that being part of the city challenge, whether you're a large or a small city, can really put your city on the map uh, as both a national and a global sort of champion on, on climate change related issues um, by being an Earth Hour capital. Yes, just to really summarize what I talked about before, we will have some very powerful communications opportunities through press releases when we launch the challenge, when we announce our finalists and also uh, our Earth Hour capitals. Uh, we produce films and other materials to inspire some inspiring examples of sustainable development from finalist cities. Um, and uh, as I also mentioned, we have uh, uh, conferences both at the global level but both uh, at national level where we award our national capitals and our global capitals where you, you can get some very good exposure. And uh, also, as I mentioned in the last slide, we have our social media campaign has uh, a small snippet from it. It's, last year it was called We Love Cities um, and when we first launched it we had uh, over 300,000 people from the general public taking part in that so it's a very good way of reaching out to uh, to your own citizens and, and wider as well. So. so just to look at the process um, if we look at the the square in the bottom left hand corner. At the moment we're in this uh, area where, where cities are submitting the city data and uh, we started up from July and the deadline is 13th of November. So cities submit their commitments, actions and emissions data via ECLAE's platform and there is a minimum requirement, at least one commitment and one mitigation action. If we then move on to the pre-screening phase where the data is analyzed by Accenture, who are here on the call, and the top uh, one to three cities with the most promising actions are shortlisted. We then go through a consultation phase where local offices, WWF offices, and other experts are consulted uh, to, in the nomination of the first of the th up to three finalist cities per country. Um, we do that so that we ensure that we, you know, we have knowledge on the ground of what's happening and we we really make sure we're, we're focused on that. Um, we then move on to the, the jury meetings, which will take place between March and May. At the first meeting, uh, the juries will discuss actions to select the most ambitious uh, national capitals and also those cities which will move forward from, from being a national capital to, to uh, the nomination phase for the global capital. And that's taken up in, a, in the second meeting. Um, we then also launch our public engagement campaign where the finalist cities are promoted through uh, media and we will also roll out the social media campaign, We Love Cities. Um, and just to emphasize here that the social media campaign has no influence on the selection of the Earth Our Capitals and the Global Winner. Um, and that part, you know, selecting uh, the the capitals is purely based on the information provided on uh, the CCCR data platform. And then final, the final phase is where we celebrate our cities, our, our winners, through international award ceremonies and further media campaigns, which uh, normally run around Earth Hour and after. Um, so that's a brief summary of the 
process. And this is just to give you an idea of who we have sitting on our uh, international expert jury. This, uh, this actually needs to be updated a little. We have a few more people here now as well. But we have representatives from the C40 Cities Climate Group. Um, we have Dan Hornwork, who's a renowned uh, expert on urban development issues, who used to work for the World Bank, who's now working at the University of Toronto. Um, uh, our partners, uh, Eclair represented through the Secretary General, Gino van Bergen. Um, we're also careful to bring in sort of regional expertise. So, Aroma Revi, who's at the India Institute of Human Settlements, is on our uh, expert uh, jury, as well as Martha Delgado, who uh, sits in Mexico City, is the General Director of the Global Cities Covenant on Climate. Um, and we have uh, Aisha Kassiria from UN Habitat who sits in Nairobi as well. So we have a very good geographical spread and also experts in different fields uh, related to climate, finance, and, and uh, urban development here. So, um, I think I'm now going to hand over to uh, Eric to take us through a bit of evaluation procedure. Eric, uh, are you there? Thank you, Jeet. Yes, um, I'm here. So I am going to go through a couple of slides looking at the, how we do the evaluation uh, during the, the competition. And um, uh, I will try to really focus on what does that then mean for you when you are reporting your uh, initiatives. So I would like to start with this slide where we're looking for some of the main criteria that the jury is looking for when evaluating the different cities. So first, they want to see cities that are moving toward a sustainable economy uh, through the development of strategic, innovative, and ambitious commitment and actions. So this means that it's important to, when reporting uh, an initiative, to really make sure that uh, this these things that the jury here that it shines through. It's hard for us when we're doing the analysis to to get a, a really good view of what is the action here if there's maybe one sentence written about it. There should be, um, it's important that, the, that, that you really sell uh, the actions that you that you include um, when you report them. The next one is that uh, the jury wants to see that you are taking ambitious and strategic actions to meet commitments towards a climate resilient future, also in respect to energy services and security, and water uh, and food uh, security. So this is something new with this competition, the focus on, on actions with energy, water, and, uh, and food. And I think that's also important to take an extra look at what, what actions do you have that apply to these areas and make sure also that you um, report them where you can tick off on the different co-benefits that, um, that this action applies to. Uh, the next one is that, you in, that actions are integrated into coherent strategies for sustainability and climate targets, including adaptation and also uh, engages the public. And uh, I think I want to emphasize here on the, 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 the public engagement. This is something that we will also look for and highlight uh, during our analysis. Uh, and this is also uh, something that the jury also is very passionate about. So actions that really inspire the public to, to, let's say, reduce their energy consumption or do other things that makes this a more sustainable city. It's important to both find these actions, report them, and also describe them well, so we also can bring this forward to the jury. Um, the fourth one is uh, about innovation and, and thinking outside the box, uh, and also networking beyond your own boundaries. And we saw the several cities last year that, that really uh, excelled within this area, for example, uh, cooperating with uh, with other cities in the region, or also even outside their own continent, and uh, and inspiring them or, or learning in order to become a more sustainable city. And I think this is something that also it's important to have in mind when 
reporting the actions and, and, and find these initiatives that, that really uh, apply to this area. Um, the next, the last one is that the, the jury also looks for significant leadership and credibility with respect to the local context. So that again also making sure that you have uh, reported, uh, especially within you know strategic actions and all the strategies that you have developed, uh, that gives a full sense of what your city is uh, is planning also uh, to do uh, in the coming uh, in the coming years uh, to become a more sustainable city, and also. And how do you communicate this and, and inspire your your population? So let's continue to the to the next one where we go a little more, become a little more technical on how we do this evaluation. So as uh, Jeet also mentioned, we we start this process with a quantitative screening. That means that there's a lot of cities that have reported actions across. Uh, several countries, and we're, we cannot bring all these cities to the jury for them to evaluate each of these. We have to somehow go more into detail on the more uh, on, on the cities that have done a, a, a stronger job in, in really reporting all their actions and have and are, are performing better than the other cities in the in the given country. So we start with a quantitative screening where we usually pick, per country, we pick between one to five, I would say, uh, cities that it really makes sense to go more into detail and look more into the details, what's going on uh, with their actions. And we do this um, almost purely quantitatively. So we have these evaluation criteria that are based on impact, um, so that's that focuses on the actions that you have reported on the platform, and the other one is based on vision. So that goes on the commitments and also uh, the strategies that you have uh, reported. So on the impact side, we have different ways to then uh, quantify the impact that the actions you have reported, and on the vision side, we quantify your commitments and we do a very high level uh, screening of your, for example, strategic documents and then apply a score so we then have a way, uh, let's say, a, a number value uh, for, the, for the vision and the impact evaluation. And then when you look on the right, we then do, um, we, we put all the cities in the country on the evaluation mat 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 matrix. Um, and we compare them to each other. And the cities then that are moving or are as close to, as possible to the upper right quadrant, they will then go through to the qualitative analysis. And then we will go much deeper into the analysis and we then prepare uh, a comprehensive document uh, where we uh, qualitatively compare the cities against uh, each other. So um, let's go to the next slide. So here is a little more breakdown on the on the metrics. So on vision, we look at commitments which then goes on the uh, commitments across emissions, renewable, and energy efficiency. Some tips here is that you should focus on reporting uh, commitments that you have. Um, and uh, so we also, for example, we, we do give extra score for stacked commitments, meaning that if you have short-term and long-term commitments for emissions reduction, for example, that gives you an extra score uh, in the quantitative screening and also that is something that is highlighted to the jury in the qualitative uh, analysis. On the ability to drive change, uh, we really look at both the, the strategic plans that you have uh, in place, so the strategic document, 
is is very important there, and also uh, your ability to um, your track record of actions, and also your ability to inspire the public to take action. Um, these are some of these can be uh, quantitatively rated during the pre-screening at a very high level, and then we go more into the detail during the qualitative. If you go through. And on the impact side, we uh, divide into four areas. So we look again on the on the actions and impact of your uh, on on CO2 renewables and low and uh, energy efficiency. And we also focus on the core benefits. And this is something uh, new when you are reporting your actions this year that you can tick off what kind of co-benefits do your actions um, uh, actually then uh, impact. So this can be, for example, uh, towards food security or energy security or, or, um, or several other areas. And also we, we look at the, the job creation uh, that the, the action generates. So this is something you can also um, you can also uh, take off and, and, and report, and also the the scale of investments that is uh, attached to this action. Um, I think also it's very important now when you are reporting your actions that you that you focus on the on the relevant co benefits. We will have, for example. Uh, do extra measure to uh, to that it, it's not positive that for example a city has reported has ticked off all the co-benefits on an action it's uh, it will be much more positive that cities have a focus on a couple of few co-benefits that really applies to this action I think there are around 25 co-benefits in total so make sure that you tick off the ones that are really relevant to this action yeah, I think also Jeet and Lucy, if you have any additional remarks uh, for the reporting and, and how this is structured, and then uh, so thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks both Jeet and Eric. So now you have a very nice idea of what the Earth Hour City Challenge theme is and what the jury will be looking for this year. And now I'm going to take you through how to actually report and participate in the Earth Hour City Challenge. Um, so as both Jeet and Eric mentioned, cities participate in the Earth Hour City Challenge by reporting to the Carbon Climate Registry. The Carbon Climate Registry is the world's leading reporting platform to enhance transparency, accountability, and credibility of climate action for both local and subnational governments, and it's operated by ECLE's Carbon team, the Carbon Center. So this is an overview of, of our website, what that looks like. Um, and before I move on to the technical aspects, I just wanted to say a few more words about the registry itself. So. The CCR was launched at the World Mayor Summit on Climate in Mexico City in November 2010 as the global response of local governments to measurable, reportable, and verifiable MRV climate action. And currently, from our last extraction, um, this included over 500 cities and regions having reported 1,000 climate and energy commitments who've also reported greenhouse gas inventories that cover 2.28 gigatons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year. All in all, this also amounted to 5,000 climate mitigation and adaptation actions. So these really show the diversity of approaches taken. Um, and this represents 14% of the world's population having committed to reduction in GHG emissions by 1 billion gigatons by 2020. And you can read all this here in our Carbon Climate Registry Digest on the web page. 
So the CCR is supported by 12 unique initiatives, including the Earth Hour City Challenge, which has been a key driver of reporting. So what started off with 100, uh, what started off with 66 cities at the challenge's inception has now increased to 166 cities as of last year. Um, and as the challenge has evolved, so have the linkages between the Earth Hour City Challenge and key initiatives to support local governments in the global transition towards a climate-friendly, one-planet future. So, as Sheet mentioned, in accordance with this year's theme, Bridging the Gap, cities are encouraged to make ambitious public climate commitments and also to demonstrate accountability by, for example, signing up for the Compact of Mayors you can see here. This is the world's largest coalition of city leaders and networks, ECLE, C40, and UCLG, addressing climate change by pledging to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, tracking their progress, and preparing for the impacts of climate change. And the CCR is the central repository for the Compact of Mayors, of which the WWF is an endorsing partner. So if your city is a compact signatory, the jury will, will also be looking at this as well. In addition, WWF is also a partner of the Transformative Actions Program, otherwise known as TAP, which is launched and managed by ECLE. So cities with ambitious cross-cutting and inclusive actions looking for funding are encouraged to provide additional information about these actions on the TAP platform. Uh, the CCR is the central repository for TAP and TAP project submissions, and we will be showcasing these actions to potential investors and national delegations at the upcoming COP21 um, to really give your local governments the visibility you deserve for, um, for your, ambitious, your ambitious projects. In addition, as of 2014, the CCR became the prime data partner of the UNF C Secretariat's Non-State Actor Zone for Climate Action, otherwise known as NASCA, the NASCA platform. So by participating in the Earth Hour City Challenge and submitting your high-quality reporting of big win actions and commitments in time for the COP21 in Paris, your city will be helping to contribute to and advance global negotiations um, to really raise the level of ambition in Paris. I would like to flag especially, we encourage you to report as soon as possible, actually by, by the end of this month, to really ensure we can take your data with us, um, although the Earth Hour City Challenge reporting deadline is November 13th. If you, the earlier you report, um, the better. So by participating in the Earth Hour City Challenge and reporting to the CCR, you are in turn gaining credibility uh, by demonstrating your power and potential to reduce climate risks and move towards global low emissions and climate resilient development. You are improving measurable, reportable, and verifiable local climate action by reporting to the CCR, and as Jeet mentioned, you can track and measure your progress over time. The CCR additionally ensures your city gains recognition for your efforts, as made visible on the platform itself, as well as through the use of your data in global advocacy processes, uh, such as through our national, through our annual reports, and through the registry's direct link to the NASCA platform. So the aim here is to really highlight your climate action efforts at the local level and how you're supporting your national governments to achieve their targets. Um, and we want to bring this to the international climate community, such as at the upcoming COP21 in Paris. And last but not least, the CCR is a wonderful source of inspiration, which includes thousands of entries, both mitigation and adaptation um, based, and um, we encourage you to check out the diverse examples of, of these entries, which I'll show you in just a moment. So, in terms of the structure of the CCR itself, um, this is comprised basically of, of four main 
uh, sections, which then are generated into a city report. And so your city profile, this contains general contextual information to support your reported commitments, performance, and actions. In terms of commitments, your, the CCR allows you to report quantifiable targets set by local governments uh, to address mitigation and adaptation. So commitments, these are a requirement for the Earth Hour City Challenge. You are required to report at least one commitment, um, and this is also a requirement for the Compact of Mayors. Then we also have a performance section for both climate and energy. Performance means um, this is where you're going to be providing your inventory data for climate and energy. And so the CCR allows you to report inventories at both the community and the government level. And a new feature of the CCR is the inclusion of the Global Protocol for Community Scale Greenhouse Gas Emission Inventories, otherwise known as the GPC which is also a compact of mayor's requirement. And last but not least, and Eric gave a wonderful introduction to this, we have actions. Actions are a, a crucial and key uh, feature of the Earth Hour City Challenge. Um, actions include climate, we're, the jury will be looking mostly at mitigation, but also adaptation actions, because we're looking for the, the co-benefits. Um, However, we strongly encourage you to report climate mitigation actions, those that have already been implemented, as well as those that are currently in progress or in the planning stages looking for funding. So the data contained in these four segments here are then used to produce uh, city reports. And Local governments can report either online or offline. So here's an example of what the online form looks like, and I will show you that live in just a moment. Um, so here you have your instructions for Earth Hour City Challenge candidates, frequently asked questions, and as you see, the overall structure of what I just discussed is here. These indicate where mandatory sections in which you should complete the field, and the little I here signifies that there's additional information for you to help you support reporting, uh, as, like so. And this is an example of the offline reporting sheet with the same structure uh, and same features, actually. So if you click on this little red triangle, then you can have, um, you'll receive additional information. Uh, so I will just show you what that's like logging in. If you're, the first thing to do if, if you are a local government or for instance, if you're a WWF country office or ECLA regional office and you would like your, to mobilize local governments or if your, your local government would like to uh, participate in the Earth Hour City Challenge, please first come to the Carbon Climate Registry page, that's carbon.org, click on Partnerships, WWF, Earth Hour City Challenge, and there you will see a list of countries that are eligible to participate in the challenge this year. You can register for the challenge here by filling out the simple form, agreeing to the terms and conditions, and submitting that. And then within roughly 24 hours, you will then um, receive notification that we have received um, your submission and that you may, you may begin reporting. If you're not sure if your local government is already reporting to the registry, I encourage you to click on data where you can search for a city. If your city does not appear, um, then that means that your city has, has not joined the CCR and we encourage you to do so. 
here. So let's log in. Let's say that your city has already reported uh, last year. This is, you log in here. As soon as you log in, you'll see that we offer all of the offline reporting sheets for the Earth Hour City Challenge in multiple languages here, as well as frequently asked questions. We also have supportive information here, such as the GPC, and we have all of our um, Carbon Climate Registry annual reports available for you as well. Um, so, in order to update, you can also, we offer you um, an opportunity if you are a reporting entity already but have not participated in the Earth Hour City Challenge, you can also do so by logging in here. This is where you can edit your profile. And then to update your commitments and actions for the Earth Hour City Challenge, your, you go um, data input. For instance, let's click on actions here. You can add a new action by clicking here, like so. As Eric discussed, it is incredibly important to summarize your actions and intended outcomes succinctly in a way that really gives the jury a well-rounded picture of, of what you're intending to achieve, um, as well as it's, it's equally important to upload a strong supporting document. We allow you to, to upload your supporting documents for your actions in any language. Of course, we encourage this, however. It's best if you can do this in English. If not, this is why, once again, the summary of, of your action, your big win actions is incredibly important to, to um, allow the jury to, to assess what you're, to gain recognition, show your leadership, and help the jury to really help you to do this. Um, and so, this is another additional incredibly important section of the online reporting sheet, uh, the co-benefits information. Here you have a list of co-benefits uh, for local sustainable development, we encourage you to think very carefully about the actions you're reporting and to link them to the co-benefits that, that they're tapping into. And, and then you can also save your new, new action. We also allow you to download the pre-populated reporting forms and generate city reports here. Um, commitments. You can edit these commitments, you can delete your commitments, or you can add new commitments. And performance, although this is not a requirement for the Earth Hour City Challenge, national and global capitals are always those that, that report their performance. Um, and so we encourage you to do so here. Just taking you briefly to the offline reporting sheet, it looks like so. So here you have a README section which takes you through the theme this year of the Earth Hour City Challenge, its purpose, um, as well as the additional initiatives that the CCR supports. Here we also have instructions to help guide your reporting process in terms of the reporting requirements. So you can report performance on a community or government level. We also, a nice new feature this year, we have um, mandatory fields left to complete. We, you can see how many fields there are left to complete at the top of your offline reporting sheet to make sure that you're reporting really um, high quality data. Um, 
and we also allow you to signify when this data is not available um, by offering applicable notation keys for you. Um, and we also have a whole section with tips and tricks to complete the performance GPC sheet, which, as I mentioned, is a compact of mirror requirement. It covers all seven greenhouse gases included in the Kyoto Protocol um, via sectors and subsectors, like so. So here you have the GPC sheet. This is really, if you're going to be completing the GPC, you're really signifying your leadership and ambition. Um, and this is a compact of Maris requirement. So within the first year, you have to report your stationary energy activities as well as in-boundary travel activities and fill out the CO2 emissions here. Um, Relevant to Earth Hour City Challenge, of course, is the commitments. We offer commitments. These can either be GHG emissions reductions uh, commitments or renewable energy targets or energy efficiency and commitments in adaptation or resilience. If you are not going to be completing the GPC sheet, then you can fill out this performance community inventory sheet and then as we discussed as is the same case with the online platform you have your actions and so the actions here contain general information as you see here we have supportive information as discussed it's important that you report your the financial details uh, financial information for your actions job creation. Uh, new this year is a very robust adaptation section that we've included and of course we have mitigation actions that you can report with a deeper sectoral focus now and co-benefits of action which I mentioned is very important. So in order to be eligible for evaluation please do report at least one mitigation action and this year the reporting of big win actions is going to be looking at those co-benefits um, and those that report co-benefits will receive extra weight in the evaluation. So overall the more powerful and the more strategically integrated and ambitious the reporting report, reported actions are, the better the city's chances of becoming an Earth Hour City capital. With our city challenge capital and please do report in English. So all in all your city report looks like so. It follows the same overall structure of the online and offline sheet although some information is not made public so this is an example of publicly available information on the CCR. Um, once again just to recap very quickly the CCR is supported by numerous initiatives. Reporting through, for instance, the, via the GPC will help improve vertical integration to link data, measurable, reportable, and verifiable data on your local community level with the national level. Um, the CCR is user-friendly now, so we've included a lot more um, quality checks and saving functions to help streamline your process. You can download your pre-populated reporting sheets in multiple languages anytime, as well as you're in, uh, very much encouraged to fill in adaptation indicators. And for the first time, we have energy profiles tracked in both commitments and performance. Um, so that's very exciting. As I mentioned, so there's only a certain amount of what you're reporting is made visible to the public. Um, and another important uh, point to make is that although you're participating in the Earth Hour City Challenge, you are not going to be publicly ranked. Um, so as Eric and Jeet mentioned, we are, you are going to be able, there will be national and, and a global capital 
um, and these are going to be made public. However, there's no ranking process, external ranking process involved. All this information that you report is confidential. I encourage you to browse around the CCR for more guidance documents. We have instructions for Earth Hour City Challenge candidates in multiple languages. We also upload webinars such as today's online, as well as additional training videos, such as for the Compact of Mayors or reporting GPC compliant inventories. So tips for reporting, to recap very quickly, um, we really are looking for you to demonstrate what your city has accomplished within the last five years and to report these actions, the progress of these actions, as well as those that are looking for funding. In terms of participating in the Earth Hour City Challenge, one mitigation action and one commitment is required. Um, we really want you, we encourage you to report your ambition um, to increase the share of renewable energies or energy efficiency targets will be awarded in particular. And for cities aiming for capital awards, please report performance. And we want to be able to track your evolution over time. Uh, so reporting more than one year is encouraged. And community level actions are also strongly encouraged. All in all, we're looking for big win actions that are sp supporting the shift away from fossil energy dependency. Um, so these are particularly encouraged, as are co-benefits related to food, water, and energy. And as discussed, becoming a Compact of Mayor's signatory is also considered a plus in the evaluation. And please provide all your summaries of all actions in English, as well as strong supporting documents. If you have any questions about reporting to the CCR, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us here at, at uh, carbon at eclay.org. We'll be happy to answer them. Similarly, if you have any questions regarding the jury or the Earth Hour City Challenge itself in terms of the selection process or this year's theme, do not hesitate to get in touch with the WWF core team in Sweden. That's at ehcc at wwf.se. Um, and now I would like to invite Jeet and Eric once again to join me to answer any questions, um, any questions you may have in the audience. Lucy, um, mm -hmm. I received a question by Skype actually of, uh, um, which was concerning the difference between uh, reporting on the GPC to just reporting your community actions. Um, and I mean, I can start in that the GPC has a, its own very special methodology for reporting for community scale um, actions, whereas if you report on um, just under community um, mm -hmm. inventories, then you're, you're, you can choose the methodology that uh, that you've been using. So the GPC has a very uh, defined, high quality methodology for, for reporting. Well, the GPC, um, I, 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 yeah, I would actually, yeah. I would like to jump in there. So the yes. GPC is a protocol. It's a protocol and it was developed by um, ECLAY, the WRI, and C40. And this protocol is really it actually allows you, it offers you the flexibility to report what type of methodology you used to report here. Uh -huh. So it's actually relatively flexible. Um, however, it is a commitment to complete the GPC. We realize that, I mean, as you can see here, um, it's an incredibly robust and comprehensive protocol. Um, that covers numerous sectors, subsectors, and scopes. Um, by the way, we included these little X's here to also help you report. Uh, so if there's information that you still have to complete, you can see that here. Um, this is a requirement for the Compact of Mayors because if you report a GPC inventory, this is, um, this is the big leagues. This is really showing your leadership and your commitment. However, 
many local governments, this, this reporting to the GPC takes time and capacity. Um, so it's really more about your comfort level and your capacity so in order to report. We offer robust guidance here. We have numerous webinar videos to help assist you through your GPC process. So it's really up to you. You have to look through what is required from the GPC here and see whether you are able to report that by the by November 13th. Um, if you are, if your local government is a compact of mayor's signatory, this means that it's a requirement to report to the GPC. However, you do not have to complete this entire performance sheet within one year. So you only have to complete the um, you only have to complete the sections for stationary energy and in boundary travel as well as um, complete CO2. And here in the corner you'll see that once you complete this table then um, this will automatically calculate your information here for you. So it looks a bit intimidating um, and it's, uh, it's however doable and we're here to guide you so if you're curious and want to know more then please get in touch. If you feel that your local government is just not at the, the point in, um, of time where this f filling out this sheet seems uh, viable then by all means, it's perfectly fine to report your community performance here. Um, and this is also, this will also provide us with it and yourselves with a great overview of, of your performance. Um, as I mentioned, we offer a deeper sectoral view, so looking at energy-related emissions from buildings and transport activities, et cetera. So you so, say that the GPC has uh, certain requirements and a certain level of detail which which uh, reporting here uh, doesn't oblige you to have. Right. So as you can see here, these are the sectors of, and uh, scopes we offer. However, the GPC, as I said, accounts for all seven gases listed in the Kyoto Protocol. Um, and this is actually a major yes. difference between the GPC sheet and the performance community sheet. Once you fill in the GPC sheet, this will really help you have, um, it will really help improve MRV vertical integration between your local government um, and national government. So we do encourage you to see where you stand and if this is an option for you this year to report. That's great. Any other questions? No? All right. Um, well, I would like to thank everyone very much for attending. And thank you, Jeet. Thank you, Eric, as well, for presenting today. Once again, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us here at the Bond Center for Local Climate Action and Reporting, carbon at eclay.org, or please go ahead and, and contact the Earth Hour City Challenge core team, WWF core team in Sweden, Earth Hour EHCC at WWF.se. Thank you very much.